So as far as announcements go today, there, there are a couple of announcements I want to share with everybody. Um, first announcement is a reminder that next week is our Black History Month concert and Pew Rally. It'll be at 3 p.m. Um, and we're inviting everybody to come for morning worship and then to come back at 3 p.m. For, for our Black History Month concert. Um, we will have some light refreshments after the concert. Y'all know light refreshments mean like cookies and punch. So don't, don't expect to be. Um, also, let's see, the theme of that is we've got a story to tell. Um, other things that are upcoming this Tuesday at 7 p.m. is our steward board meeting. I'll make sure that the stewards have all the information about that as far as the Zoom information and the agenda. Then this Thursday at 7 p.m. is our um, stewardship and finance meeting, which is also at 7 p.m. Um, and I think that's all. Oh, yes. Um, the church has been invited to Bethel AME Church in Leavenworth, Kansas is Usher Board Musical. Um, and that will be Sunday, March 19th at 2 p.m. And you'll be hearing some more information about that. And I would like to meet with folk uh, who have been participating in the praise team about the possibility of the praise team or some soloist singing. Let me think. There is probably something else that I'm supposed to announce that I forgot. Um, and I apologize, everybody. Charge it to my head and not my heart. I, I have cluttered brain. So, so if I don't write stuff down, I forget stuff. If there is something that I was supposed to announce or share and I remember it before the service is over, I'll come back to the announcements. Is that okay with everybody? All right, as we are getting together and getting ready for the service today, um, since that's all the announcements that I have, what I am going to do is I'm going to turn things over to Denver and Virginia for them to give us their Sunday school reports. Um, I'm going to let them decide who goes first. All right, it looks like Virginia is going to go first. Virginia, tell us a little bit about your Sunday school lesson today. Feel free, pretty girl, pretty girl, to start off with what the lesson title is. It was lesson 12, right? Yeah. So what's the title of lesson 12? Okay. Um, the title is Love All People. Wait a minute, hold up. The lesson is about loving all people? Uh, yeah. The grown-ups have to love the kids? Yes. The kids have to love the grown-ups? Yes. Folk who know, who've known each other for a long time have to love folk who just met? Yes. Okay, all right, keep going. What are some other highlights from your lesson? You want to tell us your key verse? Yeah. So what's the key verse? The key verse says, if you really keep the royal law as in the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. James 2 through 8. 
All right, James chapter two, verse eight. Thank you very much. What else do you want to share with us? Take clip one. All right, go for it. I will love all of God's people the same. Okay, anything else? What about the second story? What happened in the second story that you liked? It's called Mini Selection. And it's uh, about a boy, Joah. And... What did he do that was different? He chose uh, the last person who usually picks first for his team. And do you think that was a way that he showed that he was loving others? Yes. All right. Is that it that you want to share? No. Okay, you got one more thing. Um, the second activity. Mm -hmm. It says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thank you very much, Virginia. Can you pass the microphone to your big sister so she can do her report? So my lesson is called God Jesus Support. And pretty much the lesson was about how God is a big favorite when it comes to his followers. That means like people who you would think is poor, people who you would think is rich. He doesn't, he is, he is a big favorite when it comes to the people that, that are his followers. So I have an interesting story that happened during the course of this week, but um, so I have Discord and Discord is pretty much like an app where a bunch of people come together through a big group chat and can like communicate with each other and stuff and text each other about similar things. So how I am with social media is that I, I'm the kind of person who doesn't really upload very much or like interact much when it comes to social media. So what happened on this specific Discord channel that I'm on, it's like this art one where I can like upload art and I can get critiques and thoughts on there if I want to. So usually what happens on Discord, I don't really text much into the channel and I don't really talk much or upload my art very often. So one day, um, there was an announcement that was made on that specific channel that said anybody who, would, who has been inactive in the Discord channel will be like kicked out, kicked out of the channel. And so I panicked because I was like, I really like this Discord channel. So I immediately started like talking more in the Discord channel and started posting my art often because I was worried I was yeah. And so because I had done that, I honestly felt super selfish that I didn't start caring about actually interacting with people on there until I was threatened that I was going to get picked up. And that's honestly how I saw it. But when I told this story to my mom, she gave a bit different um, perspective. Which was just like, yeah. It was kind of that you didn't care until it seemed like uh, it seemed like you were getting picked out, but that just means that you cared that much that you wanted to see it. So, like, ah. okay. Awesome. 
So how does that relate to the lesson? What's different about that discord channel and about God and God's faith community? Uh, the difference is that it pretty much was like a way for to get people to interact more on the Discord channel. And it's not like they were specifically just de- taking people off the Discord channel without being more in their community. They specifically gave a hope so that people who actually wanted to stay on the channel could stay on the channel if they wanted to. Awesome. Thank you very much, both of you, for your reports and for sharing with us what you learned today. All right. Well, church family, I'm going to highlight our worship guide and then we're going to go into it um, because we only had a few copies uh, of everything. So here's what we're going to do. Um, We're going to do our doxology, and after our doxology, we're going to go into our call to worship, which is responsive. Um, We are going to do our best to sing, mine eyes have seen the glory of the calming of the Lord. Um, This just happens to be Transfiguration Sunday, and I like that here because it talks about seeing God, And, and that's a big deal to be able to see God for yourself. Uh, And so that's why we're going to sing that particular hymn. It is hymn number 572 in the AME hymn notes that are out there. Um, After that, we're going to do our morning prayer. And Denver Glenn is going to do our morning prayer for us. We will do a prayer response. And after that, our scriptures will be Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 through 18, and 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. After that, we're going to go into our summary of the Decalogue and our Gloria Patri. Um, after that, Virginia Glenn and I are going to teach the church a song that she and I made up on the way to church one Sunday. Uh, yeah, 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 y'all ever, you know, had had a nice little commute to church and you just decided that you wanted to give God some praise. Uh, uh, hint, hint, it is based on Psalm 150 and y'all might detect that the song is called Make Some Noise. Um, after that, we will do the altar call, followed by the tithes and offerings. Um, and then we will go into the morning message for the day. After that, we'll do the invitation to Christian discipleship and decision time. And then we'll do our closing doxology and benediction. That sound like a plan to everybody? All right, let's stand and we are going to sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Um, If you can remain standing, our call to worship today is, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are those that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Lord. Lord, 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 Lord
Amen. And that opening song once again is Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory of the Coming of the Lord, also known as the Battle Hymn of the Republic with the refrain of Glory, Glory, Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible twister. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dues and dance. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is shifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Amen. God's truth is marching on. I invite you to be seated as we invite Denver to lead us in prayer this morning. Dear God, come into the place and fill us with your grace. Comfort us when we're sad. Calm us when we are anxious. Bring order to our chaos. Make us into a community worthy of you and saturate our lives with a hope that never disappoints so that we don't live, leave here like we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear our prayer, oh Lord. 
Thank you very much, Denver, for leading us in prayer this morning. Our scripture lessons for today come from Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 through 18, and then 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. And when you have Exodus chapter 21, 24, verses 12 through 18, please say amen. Amen. Um, this morning, I'm going to read it from the New Revised Standard Updated Edition. Listen for the word of God. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there. I will give you the tablets of stone and the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua and Moses went up onto the mountain of God. To the elders, he said, wait here for us until we come back to you. Look, Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the Israelites. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Then the New Testament lesson is from first, I'm sorry, second Peter chapter one, verses 16 through 21. That's second Peter chapter one, verses 16 through 21. When you have that, feel free to say amen. amen. Also from the New Revised Standard updated edition, listen for the word of God. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but we have been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory saying, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So, we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day draws and the morning stars rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. This is the word of God for the people of God. All praise and thanks be to God. Um, our summary of the Decalogue um, is actually pretty interesting. It has a lot to do with the Sunday school lesson for today, um, because in it, Jesus Christ gives us cliff note versions of how to please God. Um, he says, we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, because it's the first and the great commandment. And the second one is just like it. You and I have to learn to love our neighbors, just like we love ourselves, because on these two commandments depend every law and every prophet. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy 
me goes as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without it amen amen all right i'm going to come down there and virginia and i are, are, are going to teach you a song we made up um by the way if if you have a tambourine somewhere around you you might grab it cuz i bet you you can use it um if if you want to um, tap into your inner child and we you remember when when your parents wouldn't let you play drums and you just hit your legs on your lap you you can channel your inner child because there there are parts in the song where, where we get to make noise y'all y'all remember how when you were little and, and your noise was annoying to your parents this time we get to make some noise for god okay all right Virginia. devotions this morning said, um, as, as adults, we have a tendency to lose the art of having fun. Um, but guess what? God wants us to have fun and God wants us to make a joyful noise. Amen. Um, this is now one of the moments in the service where we all get a chance to participate. Um, it's time for our altar call. That's the moment in the service where you can come to the altar and share with God all your dreams, all your fears, where you can have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about everything. You have the option to come to the altar to pray, or you can pray in your seat. Either way, the altar is open. Will you pray? The lightning flashing, I've heard the thunder roll. I've heard sent breakers dashing heaven, which almost conquered my soul. I've heard the voice of my Savior bidding me still to fight on. He promised never 
to leave me, never to leave me alone, no, never alone, no, never alone, he promised never to leave Never to leave me alone. The world's fierce winds are flowing. Temptation sharp and keen. I have the peaks and no. My Savior stands between, he stands to shield me from danger when earthly friends are gone. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone, no, never alone, no, never alone, he promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. Isn't it awesome to know that our God not only promises never to leave us alone, but God is always ready, willing, and able to hear our heart's prayer. Um, this is another moment in the service where we all get a chance to participate. Um, it's time for our tithes and our offering. And you have several opportunities of how you can give today. Um, you can give traditionally by placing your offering in the offering plate. Um, you can give via Zelle Pay to St. Luke AME Church. You can give via Givelify to St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. You can give via Cash App to dollar sign ST Luke. A-M-E, Lawrence, Kansas. You can even mail your gift or drop your gift in the mail slot. Let's pray. Wonder working God, we thank you for being a God who provides all we need and more. We also ask, oh God, that you receive our gifts and allow it to be used for your kingdom glory. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives to you. Just keep on giving. Because it's really true, you can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. If y'all will indulge me, today, I would like to invite us to go right back 
to the 24th chapter of Exodus. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 12. Um, but this time I am going to read it from the New Living Translation. Exodus 24, beginning at verse 1 and continuing through verse 12. Exodus 24, beginning at verse 1 and continuing through verse 12. When you have that, please say amen. amen. As recorded in the New Living Translation, listen to the word of God. Then the Lord instructed Moses, come up here to me and bring along Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of Israel's elders. All of you must worship from a distance. Only Moses is allowed to come near to the Lord. The others must not come near and none of the other people are allowed to climb up the mountain with him. Then Moses went down to the people and repeated all the instructions and regulations the Lord had given him. All the people answered with one voice, we will do everything the Lord has commanded. Then Moses carefully wrote down all the Lord's instructions. Early the next morning, Moses got up and built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He set up 12 pillars one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent some of the young Israelite men to present burnt offerings and to sacrifice bulls as peace offerings to the Lord. Moses drained half the blood from those animals into basins. The other half he, spat, he splattered against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it aloud to the people. Again, they all responded, we will do everything the Lord has commanded. We will obey. Then Moses took the blood from the basins and splattered it over the people, declaring, look, this blood confirms the covenant the Lord has made with you in giving you these instructions. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and, and the 70 elders of Israel climbed up the mountain. There they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet, there seemed to be a surface of brilliant blue lapis lazuli, as clear as the sky itself. And though these nobles of Israel gazed upon God, he did not destroy them. In fact, they ate a covenant meal, eating and drinking in his presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain, stay there, and I will give you the tablets of stone on which I have inscribed the instructions and commands so that you can teach the people. In the time we have together, I'd like us to focus on this thought, mountain experiences that change everything. Mountain experiences that change every single thing. Um, can can y'all indulge me for a minute? Because there are some things about this passage of scripture that are just straight up weird. Okay, because usually when you see some kind of a mountain experience in the Bible, it's not an experience that everybody can tap into. I, I mean, did y'all notice that this one mountain experience was experienced by the folk at the foot of the mountain, was experienced by some priests and some elders halfway up the mountain and was experienced by Moses at the top of the mountain. It's one experience, but it's an experience that allows three different groups to connect with God and to tap into God in a way that makes sure that all of them leave different than how they came. Church. What a wonderful world it would be if we could have a mountain experience that allows us to leave the encounter different than the way we came. What a wonderful world it would be, church, 
if believers could have experiences of God that allow everybody, everybody, wait a minute, every single body, the folk in the pews, the, 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 the stewards and the trustees, the, the, the ushers, the young people, the folk in the middle, the, the folk who are singers. If, if everybody in the church, if the men and the women, ooh, if everybody in the church, the lay folk and the preachers, if everybody in the church, the folk who come every Sunday and the folk who ride in whenever they can get in, it would be so awesome, church, if every last one of us could make a connection with God so powerful that when we leave, we say, yay, I'm down with G-O-D. You know me. Because that's exactly what happens to the people at the foot of the mountain. I I don't know about you, but in most of these stories, what you see is that the closer you can get to God, the more profound your connection with God is. And if you can't get close, you might just miss your blessing. But in this passage of scripture, the people at the foot of the mountain who aren't allowed to go up the mountain, the people at the foot of the mountain who maybe aren't as adept at making sense of the Bible as folk who have been in Bible studies and Sunday school classes all their life, the folk at the foot of the mountain get to see God in such a way that they go, I want to be connected to that God, the one who brought me out, the one who brought me over. I want to have a relationship with that God. And if my relationship ain't like your relationship, that's all right with me. The folk at the foot of the mountain <sighs> hear the word of God and see God connecting with Moses and see God connecting with the priests and see God connecting with the elders and say, there's got to be a connection for me. There's got to be something that God's got for me. There's got to be something that God's got for me. So I want to be whoever God creates and saves me to be. It's the reason why, why when Moses reads the law, they say, yes, 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 we're going to obey the Lord. Yes, 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 we're going to be the people that God wants us to be. Yes, 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 yes. And in response, Moses cements and solidifies their commitment by marking the spot where it happened. The 12 pillars are a way to mark the spot, but he doesn't stop there. He, he, he begins to solidify the covenant to, with, with, with the sprinkling of the blood. Now, I know those of us in 2023, some of y'all are like, okay, that's a little gross. But, but, but see, there's something about the blood in the Bible that extends life to that which thought it was dead. There's something about blood in the Bible that extends hope to the hopeless. There's something about blood in the Bible, not just when it's shared, but when it's sprinkled, that covers, that renews, and that restores. Y'all do know that it was because of the sprinkling of the blood that the deaf angel passed over the houses of the Israelites in Israel. Y'all do realize that it is because of the sprinkling of Christ's blood that we are saved and we can be connected to this God in three. There's something about the sprinkling of the blood that cements our covenant relationship with God. And when they say that they will obey the Lord, Moses marks the spot. But that's just the folk at the foot of the cross, y'all. That's just the folk at the foot of the cross. Because after that, God says, okay, so here's what I need to happen. I need Aaron. 
I, I need Nadab. I need Abihu. And I need the 70 elders. I need the folk who I am commissioning to be the ones who help the folk at the foot of the mountain come up a little bit higher. I need them to know that I've got a work and I've got a mission for them. I need them to know that they are anointed for it. Even if there are moments in their life where they think they aren't equipped, even if there are moments in their life when they get tired, I need them to know that I have placed my hand on them and I have blessed them. I need them to have an experience of me. That's unusual. Because typically God says, you can't see God and live. As a matter of fact, the last time that Moses was up on the mountain, way back in Exodus 19, one of the things that God said was that nobody but Moses can come up and see God and live. But this time, this time, did y'all check what was different about this? This time, Aaron, um, I messed up his name, y'all. But y'all know the list. Go back to the scripture. Y'all get it right. Hebrew names are not easy to pronounce when you not Hebrew. Um, and all of these priests and all of these elders get to come up a little bit higher. They don't get to go all the way up to the mountaintop. They don't, they don't stay at the bottom, but they reach a spot on the mountain where when they get there, they see God. And God doesn't strike them dead. He said it would, but that ain't what he did. As a matter of fact, not only does he not stop them, strike them dead, he has a meal with them. He has a fellowship meal with them. So you know how the sprinkling wing of the blood does something? There's something about these moments when we get to eat with God, when we get to sit down with God, when we get to take in all the good things that God has for us that changes our mind, that anoints our spirit, and that convinces us that we are equipped for whatever God has for us. And, and, and because of that, because of that, these priests will go on to lead the children of Israel for generations to go deeper, to go higher. And yeah, sometimes to repent. Because you know, the focus of a priest isn't just to do rituals, right? They're supposed to call us on our stuff and invite us to repent, not just individually, but corporately. Because God knew there were gonna be some times when the Israelites would just act straight up stupid and would do the exact opposite of what God called them to do. And in order for their relationship with God to be tight and right, they were going to have to not just say, I'm sorry, but they were going to have to show that they would make amends. And part of the showing of making amends were the sacrifices and the prayers and the songs and the worship ritual that they would do, all of which the priests and the elders would lead them in. Mountaintop experiences, they change everything. Mountaintop experiences that change everything. And then, and then, see, some of y'all are like, but what about Moses, Pastor? What about Moses? He actually got to go all the way up to the top. What about Moses? He actually got to go all the way up to the top. Yeah, he actually got to go all the way up to the top for a reason. Because when you're in leadership and the weight and the responsibility of more than just your life is on you, and you see people for whom you are responsible, making choices that you can see will be detrimental to them, but you can't do anything to stop it. You can't do anything to block it. It hurts your heart. Um, when, when, when you see people who you care for, choosing to do things that are not good for them, it hurts your heart. And if it doesn't, you're in the wrong leadership position. Amen. Amen. God knew that would happen. And do you know why God knew that would happen? Because God had already experienced it God's self with each and every last one of us. And so when God calls us to a leadership position and God knows that we will experience that pain and that anguish, do you know what God does in those moments? God creates 
space and time where we can connect with God individually, where God can pour God's love and God's strength and God's courage into us so that we don't get tired of doing well. Because the truth is, when Moses came down from that mountain after 40 days and 40 nights, the Israelites had lost their mind. They got tired of waiting. Um, they, they convinced Aaron to take all their gold jewelry and melt it down. And they must have had a lot of gold jewelry, y'all, because it was enough to create a golden calf that was big enough where it could be in the midst of them and that they could say that's what brought them out of Egypt. And when Moses came down from that mountain with these wonderful Ten Commandments inscribed on, on tablets, if y'all seen the movie, The Ten Commandments, this was one, whichever version it was, the, the old one, Charlton Heston one or the new one, this part is probably pretty accurate. I really do believe that when Moses came down to the mo came down from the mountain and saw them doing that, that he dropped that sucker. But, but I actually believe he did it like this. <laughs> For real? And the brother was ready to go, you know what, God, you need to just take these people. You, you do whatever you want to with them. But because he had been to the mountaintop, because he had spent time with God personally, he could pull back on that and he could go to bat for them and say they need another chance, Lord. He could go to bat for them when they acted stupid. I didn't want to go into the promised land and say, come on, God, you got to give them another chance. All of that is because he spent personal time with God and it changed him. Look, church, every last one of us is granted mountain experience that can change everything, but they don't have to. They can change everything, but they don't have to because sometimes the change can be temporary because, you know, the, the, the priests were on fire, but they were easily distracted and convinced to do something that they should have known they shouldn't have done. Remember, they had this awesome experience with God that, that solidified for them that they were called to a special ministry and that God had God's hands on them. But when they came down from the mountain, they were able to be pressured by the people to turn their back on that same God. But here's what I like about God. We never get just one. We never get just one because God doesn't give up on us. How do I know we never get just one? Because when you flip all the way to the New Testament, there are these three disciples who get to go up onto a mountain with Jesus. And while they're on that mountain, they also get to experience God in a way that changes everything. They get to, they get to see Elijah and Moses folk who were dead. And then they also get to hear God's voice saying, this dude right here, that's my son. I'm really pleased with him. And because of that, it solidifies their commitment to not only follow Jesus, but later on, they can reach back on it and say, this is the reason why I tell you Jesus makes all the difference in your life. This is the reason why I tell you that if you would dare to connect with God, those connections will change everything. It will give your life purpose. It will give your life hope. It will give you peace. And when you're right about to give up, it will remind you that nobody else is ever lost or forgotten who cannot be found. So my question for us today before I take my seat is, can we have an experience like that amongst us today? Can we experience God in such a way that we are committed to being partners with God? to spread the message that the hope in God we have never disappoints? Can we 
make connections with God at whatever level God allows so that the world is not the same. Can we make connections with God that ensure we don't leave here like we came? I hope so. We won't leave here like we came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, afflicted, sick, or lay. For the spirit of the Lord is still the same. We can't leave here like we came in Jesus' name. The word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise be to God. So church, this is that moment in the service that I love. It's the opportunity where I get to ask you to make a decision for God. So here's the first one. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, today can be your Holy Ghost birthday. Um, it's really not complicated. Um, here's one prayer that you can pray. Merciful God, I know that without you, I would be nothing. Without you, I would fail. But because you choose to save me, I want to be saved. Jesus, come into my heart, my mind, and my soul. Save me and make me whole. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer or anything like it, I want you to know that you received the gift of salvation. And you are a part of a fellowship of believers that's been going strong for more than 2,000 years. If a decision that you need to make is to cook up with a fellowship of faith where you can work out your soul's salvation and you're looking for a permanent church home, you can become a member of St. Luke. Um, it doesn't take a lot. You can come forward if you're in the building. Um, if you're with us virtually, you can send an email or put something in the chat and let us know that you're interested in becoming a member. And we will work you, walk you through the process of uniting with this fellowship. Now, for some of y'all, you're like, what you mean process? If you got to make an informed decision about your doctor, shouldn't you be able to make an informed decision about the church where you're working out your soul salvation? Amen. Let's be real. All doctors ain't right for you. And all church fellowships ain't right for everybody. So, so we do you a solid. And we let you determine whether or not this is where God wants you to work out your soul salvation. And there's a whole process for that. Um, if there's one, the altar is open for you. Another option that you can have, if you would like special prayer, if you'd like me and the church to pray with you today, the altar is open for that. Is there anyone who would like special prayer today? All right, I'm, I'm gonna come that way.
perfect for black for blue heart. More times in the moment it feels like he can't. Well, if not, at this point in the service, we are going to stand. We are going to sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. And I'm going to give you the closing benediction. You ready? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him above here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No matter where you are at the mountain, whether you're at the foot, whether you're halfway up or you're at the top of the mountain, there are mountain experiences that change everything. There are moments when we connect with God that fill us with peace and joy and hope and strength and that embolden us to share the message of hope with everybody else. So may we experience God in such a way that we know that we are down with GLD. May we experience God in such a way that we are filled with power and strength to reach out and to encourage and strengthen one another. May we experience God in such a way that we don't give up in doing well, but most of all, so that we never leave the same way we can. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may God allow God's face to shine upon you and give you peace. Go with God, everybody. Amen. 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 Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you everybody. for the anointed word, Pastor. Thank you for your preaching. And, and see you next week. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there in person next week.